Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie and my channel is all about budgeting and getting out of debt. Um, today's video is just literally off the dome. <laughs> um, I did not prepare for this video, but this video is going to be uh, budgeting for beginners. I tend to get a uh, random comments every now and then of how to budget and the difference between a sinking fund and a cash envelope. So I decided, let me go ahead and make a video right quick. So I pray to God that I can get this out to a beginner who wants to get their finances together uh, and I don't stumble over my words. So budgeting, how I look at it from Jackie's point of view, because I like to simplify things. So budgeting, of course, you're going to start with your calendar. You're going to put all your bills in when everything is due. Right now, I don't have April filled out. I do have my paydays filled out. So, so I have my paydays filled out. So we all know rent is due on the 1st and you have up until the third to pay your rent that's for us over here as you can see i have a payday on the second so that means i'll be able to cover rent but do we want to do it that way no because nine times out of ten that rent is going to take that full check so what you want to do you want to prepare yourself the prior month which is march so a lot of budgeters tend to having their rent for example we are in april as you can see when i budgeted i budgeted our rent to be one thousand two hundred six dollars and sixty eight cents um if you're new here i like to pay all our fixed expenses on our chase credit card that's why you see a thirty dollar fee here they charge me a thirty dollar fee so i don't know if I want to stop doing that, because that's a big fee, but nevertheless, they don't have nothing to do with this video. <laughs> so basically, um, this is our rent. Now, this is my monthly budget. I break my monthly budget down into paychecks. As you can see, paycheck one just passed. I saved half of our rent, which is 603. When I say saved, I make sure I leave it in the account um until that chase credit card is ready to be paid so basically i'm gonna have i'm gonna, um, i'm making sure that that chase credit card will be paid in full at the end of the month so when the next month roll over it can pay the bills just like i got we got paid on a second we didn't have to take her that full rent it was already there if that makes sense so I wanted to address, you see that we have five paychecks. I like to half in our monthly expenses when I get paid. I get paid bi-weekly, and that's when we have the most income. So that's why I said half. All right, so going back to the calendar, you're going to have your rent, and you're going to have all your bills listed. And basically, you just pay what bills are needed with that paycheck. Um, I think it's easier to be a paycheck budgeter um, until you get your finances together. Um, being a paycheck budgeter, if you get paid on a ninth, something is due on the 10th, something is due on the 13th. Make sure though that bills that's due on the 10th and 13th is paid with that ninth paycheck and go on fourth. Alrighty, so with the monthly budget, I like to set up a monthly budget as you can see it lets me know what i can spend on each category so when you're doing your budget you're going to start with your income and this is just a estimate and a good rule of thumb that i have learned being on this budgeting journey and debt-free journey is to always budget on the low end so when the real paychecks come in you know you'll have more and you can throw it at savings or you can throw it at debt. So as you can see here, this is our monthly budget. I'm guesstimating, estimating that we're going to bring in $6,300. i am going to make sure everything 
that we consider our four walls is taken care of first. That means rent, cell phone, minimum payments on credit cards, streaming services, you name it, light bill, <laughs> every you know, car notes, car insurance. Make sure those are taken care of first. Once you get that number, our number is $2,197.45. I'm gonna subtract this number, uh-oh, from this number, 6,300. And that's letting me know, okay, for the month, I'm gonna have $4,102.55 left. I can use that towards my cash envelopes, my savings, my, my uh, sinking funds, and an extra debt payment. So once you get your fixed expenses together, that's when you can come down to your cash envelopes. Now, a lot of people don't understand what cash envelopes are. Cash envelopes are categories that you tend to go over in in your budget. You wanna make sure that you have a set amount for the month and you stick to it. Example, let's go with, uh, where do I have it at? Food, I budgeted $500 for food. Now in my head, this is only for groceries. All right, and you see I have $500. So what I do, I go to my calendar. I show we have five weeks in the month of April. So I'm giving us $100 a week, and that's $500. And what I would do when that first paycheck fall through, I budgeted that $100 for food. So the thing with cash envelopes, it helps you stay on budget. Uh, let me stick with groceries. We always tend to go over on groceries. We can be at the grocery store, we have that $100, the bill come up to $120. Nine times out of 10, I'ma tell you what I used to do. I get that credit card or I get my debit card and I swipe for that $20 because one, I don't want to put the stuff back because I just want it. Two, or it may be a long line. So now that I'm budgeting, what I try to keep in mind is know what you're going for in that grocery store. And two, forget about them people behind you. You want a budget. <laughs> So if you come up, if your bill is $120, you better take $20 off. So how I look at it, that $20 um, that you're going over in grocery will tend to add up. As you guys know, we're in a five week month. Think about it. If you go over groceries, $20 a month, that's two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a hundred dollars that you could have saved towards your debt snowball or savings. So that's why we like cash envelopes. That's why we like to stay on budget with cash envelopes. Now cash envelopes, the categories are endless. As you can see, we have a spending category. That's our personal spending. I budget 200 a month for that. That's $20 each for me and my husband. That helps us out. $20 can buy a lot if you budget it right, or it can buy you some foolishness that you, you know you don't need, but you budget it for that foolishness, if that makes sense. <laughs> So I also have kids. My children always want something. My babies are still little, and what I used to do is budget a lot of formula, but now that she's off formula, I like to budget money for them. Sometimes I might have to buy nutritional drinks for that week, or I have to buy uh, a new sippy cup. You know, stuff like that. And sometimes you can budget a little bit more because you may have to buy diapers and wipes. That's for our kids category. Gas, we have to have gas to go somewhere. So you just know how much money you spend on gas for the week and you times it by how many weeks in that month. And like I said, cash envelopes, the categories are interest, uh, uh, endless. So what you do, you go by how you set it for yourself. Like I said, cash envelope categories are very, it's just out there. It depends on what you feel like you overspend on every month. Now, um, seeking funds, I'm gonna start with savings. Savings and seeking funds are two different things. So a savings is, you know, like an emergency fund. As you can see here, I, I am not uh, 
we are not putting money towards our emergency fund. Remember, this is our monthly budget. We're not putting anything towards our emergency fund. Our goal is to have $5,000. Right now, we have 4000 in the savings account. That's just money we put aside for emergencies only. It is not a sinking fund. Alrighty. Sinking funds. How I look at sinking funds, it's like little buckets. Every time you get paid, you're going to put money in each little bucket. So my little buckets is family, Christmas, Ari, Alana, car maintenance, medical, Sunday, miscellaneous. So I know my family is going to need things. Uh, I have a three-year-old. He's growing. I know he's going to need shoes. I tell you right now, his Easter program is coming up this Sunday. The suit that I want him to wear, he does not have any brown shoes. So, I need to go buy those brown shoes before Sunday get here, right? So, what I do, I will go into the family envelope because I have set aside money from the months for the family. This helps me stop swiping on my credit card that I don't have. Like, why am I swiping that on my credit card, especially if... It might be 20 or $30. That's going to add up eventually. Christmas. Christmas is a good sinking fund. Um, Christmas, we know it comes up every year. We know who we want to buy uh, presents for. So we need to start saving for it. So what my family do, this month we're putting back $5 a month for Christmas. Because if we go back to the calendar, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's five uh, weeks in the month of April. So $5 times five equals 25 for Christmas. It helps you stay on budget. And just like my other categories. So the difference between sinking funds, I think it's two categories for sinking funds. It's gonna be for the expected, like you know it's coming around, Christmas, and the unexpected. My boy needed some shoes for Easter. So that's what seeking fund are. Seeking funds are. It's little buckets that you are putting money in every time you get paid. And if you need it, you can go ahead and get it instead of putting it on a credit card or going into debt for it. All right. And then how my um, family do it. Once we are done funding our sinking funds, whatever is left, we're going to throw it at debt. So I'm guesstimating that we're going to throw $1,763 at Quicksilver. That's what my budget is allowing. But remember when I told you guys, I am budgeting at a low end. So some extra money may come in, God willing. Send the blessings, Lord. Or I may get out there and do some door dashes so I can apply it to my debt. So this is budgeting for beginners. And I really do hope that I, tr I simplified it and I hope I didn't miss anything. And if I miss anything, please drop a comment in the, the, uh, in the comment section and I'll be sure to try to answer it. Um, it's so many budgeting for beginner videos on YouTube and I thought that I didn't have to make one but I tend to get this question every now and then so I thought it would be cool just to have a, a video dedicated to budgeting for beginners but before I let you go <laughs> I just thought about something when it comes to your cash envelopes these are, like I said, your everyday spending. They are going to stay in your wallet. Right now, this is the wallet that I'm carrying. And these are the categories. Today is Saturday, and we're going to go ahead and get out there. If I need gas, I budget it for gas. Family time, I have money budgeted. So you keep your cash envelopes with you at all time because these are everyday spendings that my family tend to go over in your sinking funds or your little buckets for savings tend to people like to keep them in the bank people like to keep them like i got it in little categories and keep them at the safe in a safe at home here's my family here's the emergency so you may be saying emergency fund, I thought that stays in the bank. It does, but I like to fund it. And once it hit a certain amount, then I would deposit it to the bank. Emergency fund, 
Christmas, all that good stuff. So, sink, sink, sorry, cash envelopes stay with you. Sinking funds stay at home. I would like to say that a lot of people, I see a channel and I like how she does it. What she do is, for you won't have to be carrying this around. She has her credit card with her. So if she's out and about, let's just say she's out and about, oh, she get a flat tire. Oh my God, I can't pay for my flat tire because my sinking fund uh, folder is at home. What she would do, she would swipe her credit card for that. And when she get home or when at the end of the month and it's time to pay that credit card off, she will go into car maintenance. She will take what was out and she'll put it in that envelope. So that's exactly what I'm doing this month. I'm gonna try that out this month and see if it works for my family. That's the thing about budgeting. You see other people do things and you wanna try, you can always try and see what works for you. So, great example, medical. My husband had an unexpected medical visit yesterday. He had to go to a podiatrist and he had to spend $82. So what he did, he used his Discover card. And what I did, I took $82 out of here and I put it in Discover. Here's that $82. So when it's time to pay Discover, I'm not looking for that money. I have that money because it's in the Discover envelope. Alrighty, I hope that made sense. So I'm gonna let y'all go now because I don't want this video to be too long. <laughs> and like I said, if you have any comments, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. And please give this video a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. You guys have a blessed day. Bye-bye.